Hi everyone, this is Paul here for the Magdalene Centre. Today I'm doing the astrology report for the week beginning the 22nd of May and I'm outlining some of the key aspects and transits taking place this week and giving an overview of what it all means. Before I do that, I just want to clarify as I always do that the astrology doesn't control our lives, it helps to give us a framework to help us understand what is unfolding around us and to help highlight where the key lessons or areas of growth are at this time and then from there it's up to each and every one of us to apply the information to our own lives in whatever way we see fit and it's making it's using the astrology to take the right course of action in order to maximize growth from the current astrology but without taking any action nothing would actually happen as such now in terms of the astrology for the week i'll start off with the moon's transit as usual so we begin with the moon in capricorn so this is a time where you may feel the need to kind of work on our obligations potentially or just looking at looking over our life and see is there anywhere that isn't going as the way we want it to and it's then taking responsibility for making necessary changes to adjust it and it's also about dealing with the more practical or setting boundaries side of um, love and nurturing because if we don't set boundaries um, when we need to then it's not we're not actually being loving as it were allowing other people to get away with courses of action which aren't um, very good on thursday the moon will enter aquarius so this will be a time where i may feel the desire to kind of work with groups or work with like-minded individuals on collective projects it's also time to kind of reflect on our place within our communities so what role do we typically play how connected are we with the people in our community and is there any way that we can better serve the communities we're in? On Sunday, the moon will enter Pisces. So this is a good time for kind of working on spiritual practice, of working on developing compassion and empathy and understanding of the people. And it's a time for, I guess, healing spiritually if we want to. But it's a time to just kind of spend time with spiritual practice and recognize the spiritual underpinnings of everything and embracing spiritual practice part of that. Before on Tuesday, the moon moves into Aries, and this is a time where we feel that emotional drive to make things happen, to get things done, or get things started. So this is a good time for taking action, as it were. In terms of the other aspects this week, um, it's nowhere near as many aspects as last week, but the first one is on Wednesday itself. This will be an exact sextile between Mars and Uranus. Now, obviously, the aspects don't just hit for a second and then go the energy builds to this point and then suddenly peters out again so we fill in this aspect during the course of the week with Mars in aspect to Uranus the challenge here is to kind of change the way we take action and to look at how can we give make sure that our actions are coming from a more humanitarian perspective or more humanitarian motivations so with Uranus in Taurus it's all about the transformation of our values and our relationship with our resources and it's learning to be more humanitarian in the way we do it or utilitarian with our resources and seeing how can we achieve more with less and how can we achieve more by sharing what we have rather than everyone trying to get the same of everyone trying to have the same tools as one another which is all well and good but most of the time the tools are sitting there doing nothing so does everyone really need one? Can we just learn to share instead? So with Mars sextile to Uranus, this gives us an opportunity to transform our actions and desires and seek to be more humanitarian or altruistic in our approach to um, issues. And it's seeking to make sure that our actions are guided by a higher understanding of understanding that we're, everything is interconnected, we're interconnected with everybody else on the planet, whether we like it or not. So separation is just an illusion of the ego as it were, we are all actually interconnected with one another at the level of um, spirit. So it's learning to transform our actions and desires so that they honour that fundamental truth and allow us to work more or more, work more efficiently within the groups or communities that we're part of. So it's working together rather than working um, solo agents, if you like. Next aspect along will be on Friday. This is a exact square between Vestra and Pluto. They'll be building up to that 
uh, on Friday and then obviously still feel it for the rest of the week. This aspect highlights where we experience a kind of conflict between desire to exercise power for um, our own personal needs and the importance of um, making sure that we exercise power for transpersonal needs, i.e. we work for the greater good, not just our own personal gain. So with the square, we may feel this inner conflict between the two. And if we're not careful, we can end up trying to wield power for our own gain or for our own uses at the expense of other people or may experience significant blocks in our capacity to exercise that power. So the key thing to work on with this aspect, if it's something that we struggle with, is to channel that high, that deep transformative power of Pluto and c commit our own personal power to social visions and social goals that will allow us to help other people in the process to transform um, the environment or the way um, we operate within interpersonal relationships and within group projects and it's learning to rather than trying to f f get use that power for our own personal gain it's sublimated so avoid move beyond the ego and instead channel that power into social visions that will not only empower ourselves but empower the people that we're working with um, the next aspect along will be on the 26th Sunday. This is a exact sextile between the Sun and Chiron, but we'll be feeling this throughout most of the week. This aspect gives us an opportunity to kind of illuminate the wound to the sense of um, self-identity. It's about understanding where do we, where does our tendency to use negative thinking after the words I am, so where we use limiting self-definitions, how does that impact our sense of self-identity or keeps us playing small or hiding our light? It's understanding that if we want to truly empower ourselves, then it's we need to kind of heal the ego. It's not so the ego becomes more powerful or dominant, but it's about transforming the, the mental scripts within the ego so that rather than using disempowering language in order to play small and avoid um, shining our light as best as we can, it's transforming the ego through using positive um, or kind of positive affirmations, if you like. It's transforming those mental scripts, so the words we use to after the words I am, because Aries is all about that affirming the self identity, the I am statements that we use. So it's about illuminating or becoming more conscious of the words we typically use after the words I am. If we usually use negative words, then this is an opportunity to transform this tendency, to let go of limiting self-definitions and instead use more empowering words after the words I am, so that we reprogram our minds, so that we have that, or we cultivate that courage to take the actions necessary in order for us to shine properly and in order for new projects um, that we're working on at the moment to keep um, growing and f moving towards fruition. And the last aspects will be on Tuesday. So the first one will be the sun is going to be exactly opposite um, Sarah's retrograde. So this marks the midpoint of the series retrograde. Series has been all about, or well, the retrograde is all about nurturing so our capacity to nurture ourselves with this being in Sagittarius with her being in Sagittarius it's about making sure that the beliefs that we hold about ourselves and to some extent the world around us are the ones that kind of nurture us and encourage us to pursue goals that are worthy of our time to believe um, that we can keep growing or um, have the belief that we have the capacity to expand our horizons both mentally, physically and spiritually. So with the sun opposite Ceres, this isn't this is the midpoint, but with this being a stressful aspect, it also highlights or asks us to um, check are there any tendencies to sacrifice our own needs for other people's sake to the extent that we don't receive the nurturing ourselves. It's do we tend to 
struggle to find that balance between having our own needs met and seeking to nurture other people. If there is, then we need to work on building up that necessary sense of self-worth in order to be able to receive nurturing and it's about the capacity to give and receive freely and equally so that you know, we're better able to nurture other people but also able to receive the nurturing when we need it um, but obviously not being dependent on other people for nurturing in the process. And the last aspect this week is going to be Juno is trying to Neptune also on Tuesday. So Juno trying to Neptune is an opportunity for us to work on spiritual union aspect of our deepest relationships. And obviously Juno isn't, well that seems more about the sort of thing you'd expect between committed partners in a love relationship. Juno also covers um, relationships with people that go far deeper than just casual acquaintances or um, simple friendships is the people that we have a much deeper kind of connection with usually people that we've known for quite some time and spent a lot of time with and have um, a lot of or know um, each other very well as it were also it can also cover the relationship between guru and disciple if you like if that sort of relationship applies in any of your relationships but either way do you know it's about soulmates it's those people that we have a deeper than normal connection with and in many cases are people that we've known for a long time and have a very deep affinity with and with the trying to neptune in pisces this is a time where i feel that transcendent urge to imbue our relationships with a spiritual um, quality and a deep level of empathy compassion and unconditional love and this potential for very deep bonds of connection based on this kind of love and this unconditional love and compassion and that almost psychic sensitivity or that psychic attunement with one another but obviously it's just potentials it's just to actually use the aspects and develop these kinds of potentials of it and against the background of these all these aspects will go against the background of us having five planets in the home signs at the moment so these are mercury in Gemini, Venus in her home sign of Taurus, Jupiter in his home sign of Sagittarius, Saturn in his own home sign of Capricorn, Neptune in his home sign of Pisces. This is unusual, especially with three of them being outer planets, because considering the different orbital speeds of the planets and the different type periods or duration it takes for each one to complete an orbit, for them to be in the same their home signs at the same time as one another is not very common, especially with three of them being um, the outside of the personal planets, i.e. Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune. So this is a time where five of the functions that the planets represent are operating in their purest form, if you like, or they're in the kind of energy that allows them to operate at full power. This will last until um, the 4th of June when Mercury moves on into Cancer. So we basically have a fortnight's window because it starts on the 21st and finishes um, on the 4th of June when Mercury changes signs, followed later on by Venus entering Gemini. But this is an opportunity for us to work on these particular planetary functions in their purest form and to bring them to their highest potential, if you like. So, for example, with Venus, it's about becoming conscious of our values and learning to separate our worth from what we have and be able to appreciate the resources that we have to enjoy our environment and um, what we have mm -hmm. around us and it's also and it's having that detachment and appreciation and that contemplative nature where we acknowledge that we're the stewards of whatever's in our possession at the moment and we seek to appreciate life and have that fundamental gratitude for life rather than always seeking to obtain or acquire more material possessions. Mercury is his um, sign of Gemini is all about perception, communication and the way we see the world. So this gives us an opportunity over the next two weeks to really work on getting to grips with the rational mind and be able to move beyond habitual thinking and limited perception to learn to be grounded in the present moment. So it's rather than because the problems arise with Mercury when we become attached to a specific perspective or 
way of seeing things to, ne to neglect of other perceptions that are also true. The only place that we can see things as they are is in the present moment because that's the only thing that truly exists. So the next two weeks give us an opportunity to work on calming the mind and bringing it to a place of stillness so we can be in the present moment so we're not attached to anything as it were and therefore we can see everything in its right relationship to one another. We also have Jupiter in Sagittarius which is all about developing that faith in life, developing in a, a sense of worldview that is empowering and allows to foster greater self-belief, a belief that life is inherently meaningful and everything in life happens for a reason, nothing happens by chance as it were. And it's that belief that we have it within us to grow, to expand our minds to the maximum extent possible. And uh, if we have limiting beliefs, we have the capacity to transform them so we don't become stuck in dogma. We open to the world as it is. We have a broad mindedness and a capacity to see everything in, um, clearly without judgment and with a tolerance um, based on understanding that we're all part of a collective humanity. None of us have all the truth. None of us know everything. So why get stressed about systems of thought um, why not just learn to enjoy life appreciate diversity and to thine own self be true and learn to be in connection with nature the natural laws and seek to understand them at a deep level and as a follow-on to that with saturn in capricorn it's about understanding the necessity for discipline of patience and self-control and it's understanding that the natural mechanism built into the fabric of um, the universe which reinforce the spiritual laws that we learn in Sagittarius. So if we don't stay in alignment with the laws, we bring karma ourselves, simply put. But if we learn to live our lives in alignment with these laws and um, have the discipline to overcome any tendencies towards instant gratification, then there's so much that we can achieve in life. We maximise our potential by operating with um, practical wisdom, of being discerning of what is true and what isn't, and having the patience to and self-discipline to stay true to those higher laws. And, the, and with Neptune in his sign of Pisces up until 2026, we're in a period where this gives us an opportunity for major spiritual renewal to dissolve so many attachments, dissolve old um, world views or old systems within our own lives and to embrace the transformative um, capacity of surrendering to God, to the infinite, to the universe, whatever words feel most comfortable to you. It's all the same thing really, but it's that learning this power of surrender rather than control and it's learning to recognize that we don't know everything in fact we pretty much know nothing so why stress over everything it's about developing that unconditional love and compassion for ourselves to heal ourselves through releasing the attachments to create suffering and learning to open our psychic senses up to receive non-rational information like all extrasensory perception that allows us to see different layer to the truth and see reality close to how it is which is it's all energy at the end of the day it's all pure consciousness operating at different levels and the only way we can truly experience it is to be grounded in the here and now so may this week bring you many new insights many blessings and may this period be an opportunity to transform several areas of life and, and quality of the mind simultaneously so we can all grow and um, transform and heal we can all break free from the past let go of the need to control everything and instead seek wisdom in all that we do seek higher understanding and higher self-knowledge and seek to live in the present moment where anything is possible so take care and may this week many blessings